Hey kids, Miss Kulkarni here. In this video, we will continue to talk about atomic theory and atomic structure. But our main focus is going to be history of atomic theory. Now, what do we know about an atom today in modern world? We know that atom is the smallest particle of matter, which also definitely exhibits the properties of that element. When we break down an atom, what can we form? We can form protons, electrons and neutrons and they are called as subatomic particles. Now, one more thing we know that all these subatomic particles, protons, electrons and neutrons from even different elements, whichever you can think about, they will always look exactly the same. And then we know this, atoms are extremely small and their size typically is one time 10 to negative 8 centimeter. So who all were the scientists who proposed new atomic models? We are the very first scientist, John Dalton, and it's called famous Dalton's theory. Dalton proposed that any atom is like a simple solid sphere. And it's almost similar to a billiard ball. Because of that, his theory was called as billiard ball theory, which kind of looks like this. Or if you consider all the elements giving different atoms, that looks like a cluster of different kind of atoms there. Now, how much was the truth in Dalton's theory? There are some statements and we are going to evaluate those statements. The first statement Dalton proposed that all the elements are composed of small particles called atoms and they are indivisible. Was Dalton correct? Mm -mm, he wasn't. He was wrong because we know atom can be divided now into proton, electron and neutron. Then let's move on to the next one. Dalton proposed that atoms of same element are identical. Was Dalton correct? No, he was wrong because we know that there are isotopes. Isotopes are like twin brothers and sisters. They had different masses. So either way, not all the atoms of same element could be identical. Here are some more statements from Dalton's theory. Dalton proposed that atoms of different elements are different. Was Dalton correct? Yes, absolutely. He was correct. So that's right. Dalton also proposed that atoms of different elements can combine with each other only in simple whole number ratio to form compounds. Was Dalton correct? Yes, he was absolutely right. Here is something Dalton talks about chemical reaction and its importance and he says atoms of one element cannot be changed into atoms of different element unless there is a chemical reaction and of course it will be probably by nuclear reaction only. Was Dalton correct? Yes, he was completely right. So Dalton's theory was partially correct. The next scientist who stepped in was J. J. Thomson and Thomson became very popular because he was the first one to discover electrons and also he said few things about protons. How did he prove those? He did a very famous experiment which is called as cathode ray tube experiment. The experiment looks something like this and we have magnetic field positive and negative the other end. Then we have electron stream without applied electric field where electrons are going straight whereas we have electron stream after applying electric field. Note what happens. Electron stream is bending towards the positive plate and it's away from negative plate. Thomson knew that electrons are negative charge because they are attracted to the positive field. So let's find out truth about 
J.J. Thompson's theory. What Thompson proposed was we have negatively charged electrons and we write them as E negative 1. They are also extremely lightweight and their mass is almost negligible. Was Thompson correct? Of course, Thompson was absolutely correct. And Thompson also suggested that all atoms will have electrons and every single electron will be negatively charged. In order to explain the atomic theory, Thompson conceived of an atom as plum pudding model. Here are two pictures given to indicate how it will look. He said that both protons and electrons were mixed together like plum pudding or think about fruit salad. So they are all mixed up. The pieces of plum according to him will be electrons swimming in the pudding and pudding will be having positive charge. Was Thompson correct? Mm -mm. He was wrong in saying that there is a plum pudding model and we will find out what is the correct structure is later on as we move on. One more scientist stepped in and his name was Rutherford. Rutherford did a famous experiment which is gold foil experiment and in the picture somewhat it explains what the experiment was. The main idea behind the experiment was to find the nature of particles which are created. So most of the particles went through which was what he expected. Some were slightly deflected and some were deflected back and then they missed the fluorescent light. And what is the explanation which he gave? He said the positive alpha particles were hitting the positive small dense nucleus and they were getting deflected. So basically Rutherford was proving that the nucleus of an atom has a positive charge. This is the summary of Dalton, Thomson and Rutherford's result. So basically what did Thomson discover? He discovered electrons. Rutherford discovered that the nucleus is positive. What did he mean by that? That means the atom has protons in it which has positive charge. Which of Dalton's points did Thomson and Rutherford both prove was wrong? According to Dalton, the atom was indivisible. Both Thomson and Rutherford proved it is false because they could figure out there are things that are smaller than an atom such as electron and proton. The atomic model did not stop there. Soon Niel Bohr came in and things changed. He proposed a planetary model. Bohr actually was a scientist working with Thomson and Rutherford. Look at Bohr's model. He has a nucleus as the center which is well defined and then he has electrons around the nucleus and going in an orbit. This model was considered valid for a long long time and we still respect Bohr for proposing something which were correct. But of course he was not right with every proposal. Bohr proposed that electrons have energy levels. He also said, further an electron is from nucleus, higher is the energy. So this one will be high energy versus this will be low energy. Was Bohr correct? Yes, he was absolutely correct. He also proposed a planetary model in which electrons orbit the nucleus as planets and those are fixed orbits. Was Bohr correct? No, he was wrong. Electrons don't have fixed orbits. And here comes the final scientist who proposed the newest atomic theory and that's Schrodinger theory. Schrodinger used some information from some other scientists, Heisenberg and D. Broglie. Heisenberg came up with an uncertainty principle and D. Broglie was using wave mechanics for electron moment. So based upon their results, Schrodinger proposed a quantum mechanical model of the atom. Schrodinger theory was not about finding exact location of the electron, 
but it was all about the probability of finding an electron in a particular region in space which is around the nucleus. In this concept, electrons do not actually orbit the nucleus but they are found somewhere in the areas around a nucleus based upon the energy and energy was given by using wave function. So this is kind of a model which you can propose for Schrodinger theory. This picture will give you a summary and evolution of atomic theory. We have first of all Dalton who talked about nothing but billiard ball, a solid sphere. Then we have here Thompson which came up with plum pudding model but he had some idea about electrons. Then of course we came with Rutherford's model in which we have easily defined nucleus. Then we have over here Bohr's model which was the model like planets which is not completely true. And the last one is Schrodinger theory. We have centrally placed protons and neutrons. And what we have around that? We have electrons in the form of electron cloud. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I will see you again in next video. Until then, bye-bye.